Welcome, folks, to another episode of Smoke 'em If You Got 'em. Welcome back. And I am the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charlton. And this is my cohort, G.I. Alamo, the one that your mother warned you about. That's correct, folks. That's correct. So tell them what, what we do here at Smoke Off God. Well, this is this is real easy. Here we go. We're going to pick a record. We're going to listen to this record side by side. Before we get to that place, you got to roll one and you got to smoke it. And we're going to listen to this one side and then we're going to rinse and repeat for the B side. So if you're like, oh, no, you know, I just smoke one joint and that'll be okay. No, no. We're going for side A and side B. Now, for today's show, what record are we going into? The name of the record is The World of Genius Hans. The World of Genius Han. And the band is Moving Gelatine Plates. Yep. Moving Gelatine Plates. So, you'll, folks. You're no, you'll know that you're at the right place the moment yes. that you write the name down. Yes, and 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 uh, you're welcome. I know. I'll just say. Yeah. I'll say it now. This so is, please, this is a good record. Go, go go on this journey with us. Put the phone down. Just concentrate for, with the music. Get yourself away from everyday life and come join us back here. And we're going to talk about it, folks. So smoke it if you got them. <laughs> Ha. Huh. Well, side A. What a wow. beautiful thing. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. G, tell me what you thought about. This is by far this, the most accessible uh, record that we've listened to on Smoke Em If You Got Em. Uh, yep. This album um, makes me feel good. Mm. And um, looking forward to the B side of this. But instrumentation here, this is. Um, I, I'm. Folks, I always say this, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's important to note that I do not look for information about this. Most of these albums that we're listening to, it's a first-time listen, so here we go. I think this is a uh, this is a French band. I think um, this is one of those uh, Canterbury um, bands. Um, and it's the perfect example. Uh, of the reason why this show exists because an, an album that like that you know artwork sound it sounds like an era but it also sounds like a soundtrack to a tolkien adventure legit for me so this is the first band that um i can see a lot of influences um clearly i hear the zappa i oh, hear yeah. i mean soft machine crimson I hear Crimson, right? Yeah. Those, those are the three main bands. Right now, we're definitely not saying these are ripoffs, folks. These are just references. Not at all. Just these references. are good references to have. If you if you understand those bands, you will understand this record. Now, I'm going to blow your mind with the little information about this this, this band. Oh, goody! Because, because um, I agree. I think this is is the <laughs> accessible is a good way of putting it because mainstream will, will never be really mainstream here. Will never be mainstream, but accessible, yes. But, yes. Um, but the band was created by the guitar player and the bass player, right? Hmm. And they are still teenagers at the time of this album. Or this band, I should say, yeah. Excellent. 19 years old. 19 what, uh, years old. What year, wow, what year is this uh, record uh, drops? 71. Okay, so you're 19 in 1971, mm -hmm. and you're going into a studio, and you got the, the accessibility to music, especially in this era of music. Let's encapsulate for a second, 1965 to 1971. You can pretty much have anything in a studio, and if it's cool and good, it'll outlive you know the time of creation, right? It'll be put on record, it'll pass on down, and this is what happens. But to be 19 and have an unlimited budget to a studio... Man, that's why the sonic palette in this album is huge. And you're correct also, they are a French band. Oh, they have that tinge. What makes you what made you think of it? What was uh, it? That... Lyrically, the music had this lilting sort of thing that uh that just reminded me a lot of like of the the subtleties of French music, man. Like there was something about about it that just really resonated in that in that respect. I'm I'm a lover of things uh Canadian. 
French Canadian too. And this is not French chain. This is this is real France. This is real. There France. you go. I just wanted you to say that. Um. Question: What what um, what guy do you think stood out for you in terms of uh, playing wise? The drummer. Now, I'm so glad, folks. We have to talk about this because again, we we and she. That's the best part about this show is is we are we are very close friends. We certainly do not talk about the albums beforehand. No. So we're giving you just our true. This is the feelings. real conversation. And uh, G, G is many things of musician, but drums is his main thing. Yeah. And same thing myself. I'm I'm play quite a few things, but guitar is my main thing. Yeah. So, uh, but I love the drums, and the drummer and very on capable, this, very capable drummer. By the way, I'm going to put the that dr- over. The drummer on this, yes, is incredible. And goddamn fast, yeah. Well, shockingly but very, but, fast, but, but, but very, but very musical. Oh See, no, no, it's, no, no, it's, no, it's no, gotta no, be. Like, I'm not saying overplays, but literally, there's some fills that are like, wow, like, oh, like he is. He's got something to prove. I'm happy you said they were 19 because it makes sense with the with the, with the speed. But along with the speed, there's a certain sloppiness that happens with music when it goes too fast, especially when you're in the studio, or whatever. This is not the case. No, these guys are very precise. Everybody's very precise, and 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 this the intention is just to be perfect. So far that we've 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 reviewed. You you might have to repeat that last bit because we lost you. This. What oh, did I'm, you say again? I, I, this is this this is, I feel is the hardest music to to play. Yeah. In terms, of if you were like joining the band, like here's the charts. Like these are really tough. Ba- a lot of tough time signatures and really tough unison parts. Yeah, playing block chords is not going to cut it for this band. Uh, main mainly a four piece, um, uh, mainly. Wow. Right, like there is there is um there's a bassoon, a trombone, and a vibraphone. Oh, a, can, back, can we just back, can we just back, sit back here on that because that right there, the added instrumentation to the, to the quartet, paints a picture of like uh, you said soft cell and uh, I was thinking soft annoying. machine, soft machine, soft, soft machine, machine. Sorry, uh, soft machine. Um, soft machine Zappa. Crimson yeah, yeah. Me. I mean, it's definitely Mother's of Invention. It reminded me a lot of San Francisco, but it had, you know, again, French prog. It, ha- it has, it has that, it has the, um, the hard quirky Zappa lines. Very much so. Th- these Zappa are never, those are the melodies. Never played that... on guitar because yeah. he couldn't play those lines on guitar. <gasps> did he say that out loud? Yeah, I said you it. Did. Out loud. You did. Sorry, guys. It's true. Look it up. I hate to break. I, I hate to break it to you guys, but yeah. But at the same time, you don't, and that's the good thing about it. Here, we're going to give Zappa. It that's Zappa. Saying. Zappa bailed almost all the time on the hard unison parts, and other people, other instruments, always played them. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to. I'm every have to part, go and look at that on not YouTube. Every myself. time, I'm going to pay attention to it. If you take about like just any like sort of um, famous song, yeah. like. Um, and you see, like the fill, it's really, really hard. Like he's usually not playing it. Mm. Well, he was busy conducting. But moving well, on. Okay, moving That's the thing. But those hard lines. Yeah. These guys are playing those type of lines in the in this in this. Uh, and I love Frank Zappa, folks. So yeah, it would but be he, it would be very intimidating to think about joining uh, joining a band that has a canon with this sort of music uh, to just go and you know cold. This is the hardest band, like I said so far. So uh, let's let's uh, take the journey for side two. Yeah, let's go to the B side, folks. And uh, again, uh, can you give them the info what we're listening to? Oh, before we go uh, to that, yeah, we're listening. We're listening to the world of genius Hans moving gel- gel- gelatine plates. Uh, what do you think about the artwork? <sighs> okay, so before I even press play, I sit for a while looking at the artwork before the music hits. in In my in my mind, I was expecting Beefheart. Captain Beefheart style music. <laughs> yes. The pink, the pink of Safe as Milk, and and, and yeah. anyway, Trout Mask Replica. Yes. Trout Mask Replica. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I, you know what? I follow my instructions, buddy. I he follow does. instructions. The words are tough. Um, words are tough. You try this, uh, but anyway, it, so I was expecting that sort of like psychedelic experience and all that. I was not ready to be reminded of uh, Ministry. Filth pig, <laughs> industrial sort of like uh, imagery. It's it's a it's a head of a pig cut off, and it's decorated um, in front of a bright neon pink uh, color. And um, 
He's got a cigar hanging out of his mouth. What are you talking he's about? hanging out. It's a great party, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, it's the world of genius, Hans. I, I would like to know what you think about it. Um, to, the you, the folks listening, uh, just run the comments underneath. What the hell you thought this was? Uh, and if you do that, I want to know what what you do. If you watch, look at the artwork when you're listening. I want to know. Music, I want to know what people think their fa- so far their favorite album cover is because we've just been bringing them gold. Gold you know, with I the find, album covers. I, I'm personally, I find myself going back to uh, Tone Float. Um, and I, and, and it's, and it's tone flowed because, uh, because the Cro-Magnon, uh, album cover, uh, that we were looking at is the reissue. It's not the original pressing. Otherwise that, it would have been Cro-Magnon, you know, but, uh, but this, okay. this, this album, I would, this album, I would definitely, uh, put it up on my wall because it's, it's a good one, but let, let's go to the B side, man. I want to, I want to check the rest of this thing out. Let's go. All right, folks. Smoke it. You got them. <laughs> And well, we're back. You are back with the folks that listen to stuff for you. The cool shit. This is smoking the got him, and we're listening to the world of genius Hans moving gelatine plates. Nineteen seventy one. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Um, this is uh, is this the first uh, album this band Second. made? Second, Second album. album. Oh, Second okay. Album. Okay. What what brought you to this to, to this record? Um. The cosmos, mostly I would say. I would say I'm not. You know what? I fuck with that, so I ain't gonna fuck with that. So B side. Now the the... question is, folks. um, (laughs) When we always talk about the album, yeah, there's once one person is selling it on Discogs right now from in Italy for 355 euros. So you know that's a steal, man. Pick it up for daddy. Send it over here. There you go. I want it on my wall. And always, hey, if you have the album, you have to give us give us some pictures. Give us proof, okay? We don't believe you. Folks, please take pictures and send them over, you know? Uh, you can find us on Facebook, and you can find us on Just Twitter show me how stuff. cool you really fucking are. Please tell me you have this goddamn album. Somebody well, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to see your buddy's collection. That, to be, to be perfectly honest with you, like, that would be, that, that's really the, the case here. Um, yeah, let like, me ask you, you something. Got, what else do you got in that fucking place? Well, if you got that shit, you probably got some good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's definitely no Anne Mary over there. How Let me ask you something. You got? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let's 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 stay. Let's right. say positive. Right. Let's say positive. Which which side is your favorite side of the album? Mm, that's a good question. I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, I think, but you didn't. Side two, um, by a little bit, but not not much. What you, what about you? Ah, I think I think the drink I just made with some uh, Ciroc vodka and passion fruit is hitting the spot. Um, mm, better with cheer wine, cheer wine and rum. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm supporting uh, black the prices. Oh, sorry. So so thanks thanks Diddy. Um, I think I couldn't decide which side I like best of this album. Yeah. Uh, I think it's exactly the same for me. It doesn't matter if I start this record on the B side or the A side. They both have really distinct um, songs and energy. And the cool thing about it is, even though it's a young crowd, the energy through the record is pretty even. Like, you don't get fatigued. To you me, know? see, like, I, I, I'm opposite. When I heard the, the thing, like, I wouldn't expect them to be that young because the level 19 of, blew of... me away of chops and love like just not many people can play that right the so the precision of the instruments to, it's just the passages yeah. right the passages yeah. are really tough right so long long so complex passages how many bands could play that not many not many there, there there were some out there but not a whole bunch not that precise not on a second album and not at 19 no not at all folks yeah it, it, it but the thing is it's the same and not a negative way because the, cause the first side, like the, the first song is so long, 14 minutes. Yeah. You know, which by one, the way, was, I did not realize that it was 14 minutes long. It took it because it's taking us on a journey, right? There's so many it's different parts. It's such a great damn journey, man. Same thing uh, with this side. They just actually broke the songs up with titles <laughs> a little yeah. bit more, you know, really to me. Yeah. Uh, what was your this, favorite song? This, uh, the. Whatever uh, number two, I don't know the. I just wrote two B side. Okay, moving themes. That one had vocals and it was very incredible. That was reminding of Camel. Actually, that's another band. There you actually. go. I, it's that's really funny because I thought Gentle Giant. They remind me. Oh, there's another band 
with the hard passages for sure. Yeah. yeah. And again, folks, these are references. Yeah, if you don't know what a uh, gentle giant is, go and look it up. It's going to help. Oh, come you. on, please. If you don't and, know, um, just fuck yourself, honestly. And uh, see, I'm more caring. I, I believe in the teachings of the Buddha, but go fucking do the goddamn research. Um, again, I can't stress enough how much the artwork to this album works with the music. It fits perfectly. You understand that there's a, that there's a, almost poking fun at certain things. You know, it's everything is wink, wink, nudge, nudge, mm-hmm. even especially with the music being so complex. Because the thing about, and we talked about Zappa for the A-side, right? There was a comparison there and we talked about Frank for a while. Um, Frank, like I fucking knew him. Um, there's the, the tongue in cheek with Frank Zappa's music as super tongue in cheek, right? It's right in your face. It's part of the whole whimsical yada yada. This is a different sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge because the music is way more complex. So it's like a deeper sort of like, it's not a hint. It's more like a punch in the gut with energy. Again, I can't stress how good the drums are. <laughs> all of the drums, all of the drum parts in here, and it's you know this dude is definitely not sitting yeah, there going to cha, doom, doom, cha. He fucking went for it. Pardon yeah, my friend. Yeah, again, again, for, and to me, in two ways. One, um, I'm really I'm thinking about it a lot. He he's playing at times because he said it's a very musical. It's not like he's overplaying. It's but when very he, when he when he does do a fill. It is so over the fucking top. It's it big is, band. It is. It's big band. It's Buddy Rich. It's Gene Krupa. It's. But it's more it's modern. It's way. It's more, more modern. nowadays. Like it's yeah. all. It's it's not quite gospel chop, but it's it's sort of like Zach Hill from Hella actually, almost, dude. It's fucking. Actually, that's uh. That really goes that's for a it. Very. That's a very good comparison. It would be like modern French gospel music. Like 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 it's Zach Hill. It's like the guy from um, Lightning Bolt. There you go. The drummer from Lightning Bolt, Brian Chippendale, I think that's his name. He's a motherfucker too, boy. Mm. He can play. That's one of the best drummers out there now, folks. Look him up. We'll but, definitely cover one of those albums. But in, but in this particular situation, we're talking about 1971. It's so far ahead. Yeah, I'm going to leave the folks with one one tiny uh, thing uh, besides my blasphemy of blasting Frank Zappa bailing on the hard parts. Why do I have to say it out loud like that, G? Why? Yeah, yeah I don't know. You just don't. Oh, but here's my other thing. Um, Go ahead. Of all, like, so when people think of, like, the progressive rock sub-genres, which okay. are quite a few when you go down that rabbit hole, mm-hmm. um, I'd say, like, people know, maybe even know they know about, like, I'm not even going to go down, like, necessarily all the sub-genres, but let's just say, like, people know about kraut rock a little bit, yeah. and they know about Italian Prague. Well, they know the bit. usual, the usual suspects or whatever. A little bit. At least they've heard the of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. know a little bit. You know, how deep, whatever. But they, they sort of heard about it, right? Um, and then, this is me included. Until uh, you know, I, I, you do the research. I will put this up, folks. I'm saying it now. Bring your lists. My top ten toughest French prog rock bands will go up against. Any other country's top 10 prog rock bands? Shots fired, folks. There is no two ways around it. The champ is asking for contenders because there's not good enough people. And here's my first guys who's on the list. Tell them something. Representing France, moving gelatin plates. There it is. Okay. We'll probably go over the other the first album too because, I mean, come on now. So no, good. this this is this is this was fantastic. I'm I'm But we try the, the the album cover folks, we always talk about this every week like it's an artistic statement. You as a band, what are you doing? Yeah. You're trying to make something and uh the true progressive rock band and and hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. And join us tomorrow for the next edition of Smoke 'em if you got 'em. See you folks. Peace. Peace. <laughs>